In 2016, the Democrats rigged their primary and have lied about it ever since. The Democrats will say and do anything to please the donor class. For three years, Democrats said they will impeach Trump. And behind closed doors, they're doing exactly that. Truth doesn't matter. Evidence doesn't matter. Due process doesn't matter. All that matters is that Trump gets impeached for anything or nothing at all. Democrats are unified on impeachment. Get the House to vote for him to impeach Trump. That's all that matters. Then persuade the Senate to agree. Master strategist Steve Bannon says Trump, President Donald Trump, will be impeached. Marcus Conte reporting. Remember when you remember back in the uh, 2016 run? You remember when they said Trump and and Steve Bannon they were Nazis? You remember that shit, right? They had they were making all kinds of comparisons. Even some of us on the right side of history believed it because of the way Trump was corralling the uh, corralling the uh, media into little pins, you know, little uh, bullpens at the at his rallies. And people say, oh shit, it's a it's just like the Third Reich coming into. Run for the presidency, right? You remember that shit, right? Steve Bannon. That's Trump. It's Steve Bannon. That's the other guy, Lou Miller. That's maybe, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> all those other, all the other cronies running around behind him, right? But it was all bullshit, right? It's all fucking bullshit, right? Trump's no communist. Trump's an opportunist, right? Trump's no uh, uh, you know, third right guy, right? So Steve Bannon. This is pretty. This is pretty powerful because I have a lot of respect for Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon was so right about about everything in 2016. He's the guy that got in Trump's ear and turned the election around, right? So Steve Bannon has said uh, on a radio show that uh, Pelosi's impeachment strategy is winning. Steve Bannon, the master strategist, says that that. Impeachment strategy of Pelosi and and uh, Adam Schiff is winning, so he did this on a. Uh, it's it's getting a lot of press, a lot of spin, uh, on a radio show um, by Mr. Katz. So I got the interview. Let's listen to the. Let's listen to it, and then I want to look more at what um, what Steve Bannon has said in the past that confirms my idea that when Steve Bannon speaks, you should be listening. Because he was 100% right about all that, that racial, you know, racial shit and uh, uh, playing um, identity politics in 2016 by Hillary Clinton. That was a failed idea. He was 100% right. So let's listen to him now about impeachment. Because a lot of us still think that impeachment is bullshit. See, we know it's bullshit. We know that, that the idea of impeachment, impeaching Trump is the only strategy the Democrats have to win, to win back the presidency, to defeat Trump. They can't run on policy because they don't have, they won't, they refuse to back the policies that the American people want. And a lot of people are starting to believe that the um, the far left, the kooky left, as they're called, are asking for too much things that are unrealistic. I fundamentally don't agree with that. I think that there's in if you want to reform a country, you know it's it's reform, it's it's change, it's dramatic change. But nonetheless, the 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 um, let, let's listen. So Steve Bannon, Steve Bannon is a is, a, is he's a master strategist, he's a master strategist, and he says that the only strategy that the Democrats have is to is to paint him as a bad guy, worthy of impeachment. So here's, here's Steve Bannon. I think that's, I mean, that is their only strategy. Let's see what Steve Bannon has to say. Good morning, America. This is the Catch Roundtable. John Katzmatidis here. Sunday morning. He's got a bit of a thick accent, Mr. Katzenberry, whatever his name is. What's going on in Washington? With us this morning is Steve Bannon, the former uh, strategist of the Trump campaign and 
president of the campaign. Uh, good morning, Steve Bannon. How are you this morning? How you doing, John? Thanks for having me on the show. Now, you have started a new gig. It's called uh, WarRoom.org. WarRoom.org, but it's War Room Impeachment is the podcast and uh, daily radio show seven days a week from uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, on a podcast and, and uh, radio and, stations throughout the country. And, and tell us about it. Well, I started this off of the uh, I started this off of that New York Post uh, interview I did. It was a week ago that so many people were surprised. I said, "Hey, look, on a date certain, Nancy Pelosi is going to impeach the President of the United States on two counts: one abuse of power, the other obstruction of justice." And many of the Trump allies, the followers, the the hobbits, the deplorables were in shock. And I said, you got to wake up to this process that Nancy Pelosi is running. She's running the most sophisticated political warfare, the most sophisticated political disinformation campaign. Uh, and they're winning right now. And we've got to get organized. And so many people came to me. And so we decided to start with Jason Miller, who was comms director and one of the top strategists in uh, politics, and Raheem Kassam, who ran Brexit for Nigel Farage. Those two individuals have run sophisticated war rooms. We've stood up a war room and we're doing a show every day. For one hour, just to get people the uh, just the facts and the details of the witnesses, the testimony, the legal arguments, all of that. We're going to go every day, seven days a week, until the day after President Donald J. Trump, the 45th President of the United States, is acquitted. Now, is, is Nancy Pelosi really going to get every Democrat to go along with her again? I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, they, they, they're all in now. They have put the business of the country off to the side. Things like USMCA, which is the new NAFTA, which would add 1% growth uh, to GDP next year uh, and the year after. Uh, they, they are not doing the people's business right now because they're 100% uh, focused on uh, impeachment. That is what is engulfed this city. And that's why I think some of the Trump allies, we were all uh, late uh, to, to wake up to this, although I've been saying it for, for, for since she started over a month ago. They are full bore, and they have the votes. You know, they have the majority in the House of Representatives. John, you remember you and I talked in the run-up to the 18 campaign. As soon as President Trump and the Republicans lost the control of the House because of Paul Ryan and these feckless House Republicans that did not fight to save the House, we said back then in 18 they were going to impeach the president. Well, they're moving forward now. She has the votes. It is sure as the turning of the earth. In a couple of weeks, Nancy Pelosi is going to bring uh, two charges uh, in front of the House, and they will vote to impeach Trump and pass it to the Senate. So it's incumbent upon every Trump ally to get very, very focused on how this can be stopped, how it can be blunted, how it can be sent in a different direction. Is there a war that uh, uh, the Trump people can mount against uh, the marginal congressmen that were afraid to vote with Pelosi in the first place? Well, John, it's, uh, you, you've nailed it around the head. The key to getting acquittal in the Senate is to make sure the House vote purely partisan. Right now, it's a purely partisan campaign. What is essential is that the 18 House Republicans that are retiring, none of those vote for impeachment. Also, there's about another, I count another 10 to 20, like uh, Kinziger in, in Illinois, who are not Trump fans, that you have to get those to zero. So you have to have zero Republican votes. And then the key is the 31 districts President Trump carried that, that, uh, that were won by Democrats in the House, and particularly in your audience alone. There are two. There are one, uh, Staten Island with uh, Max Rose, and then uh, New, uh, New Jersey 11 has a terrific uh, uh, young woman who, uh, who, was a combat, who was a combat helicopter pilot out of the Naval Academy. She won in, a, in a, really a Republican district. It's those two types of congressmen that you're going to have to really make sure they understand that if they vote to impeach Trump, they've essentially signed their political debt, uh, that they will not be reelected. So that's the type of uh, you know, it's a type of analysis, the type of information that people have to have. And so far, the Trump, really the Trump base is, is thinking, hey, President Trump's doing a great job. This is fake news. It's deep state. It's a witch hunt. Well, it may be all of those. and You may think that in your mind. But the reality is Nancy Pelosi is running a highly sophisticated political warfare. She's got the votes. What's in incumbent upon now is make sure no Republicans in the swing district uh, Democrats do not vote for impeachment. You have to turn this into a totally partisan vote to show the American people that President Trump hasn't done anything wrong. Now, you that's pretty powerful stuff, right? So he's he's saying that uh, that uh, that it's a real thing. And and the, the the thing that I when I listened to it, what I got away, what I took away was that that um, 
Steve Bannon is not making the argument that it, that impeachment that somehow you could win the argument that Trump shouldn't be impeached to Democrats. Let me say that again, that you could win an argument with Democrats that Trump shouldn't be impeached, that that is an impossibility, right? That's what he's saying, is that it's, it's all partisan politics. You're a Democrat, you vote to impeach Trump. Why? What difference does it make? Just impeach Trump. That's the strategy. The strategy is to impeach Trump. See, that's a tough one to get around because it, it negates all policy. It negates all argument of what I said initially, which is, which is evidence, which is due process, which is truth. None of those things matter to the Democrats anymore. Right? That's, what it's, that's, what he's, that's what Bannon is pointing out. And is it true? Yeah, there's truth in what, what he's saying in the actions of the Democrats. They're sneaking around behind closed doors. Adam Schiff... Uh, when the Republicans barge in to make the process transparent, he takes the witness and, <clears throat> and runs out the back door with a witness in closed door, you know, uh, uh, conferences. So, <laughs> is there evidence to suggest that the Democrats are, um, you know, doing this? Are they? Are they? Are they gaslighting the American people? Are, are they so headstrong on nothing but impeachment? So help me God. Yes, that is that is absolutely the strategy. Let's listen to what else he says. There's, I think, one or, uh, or two other points. We're on certain stations uh, already, and but you could also go down the website and tell the people again the website. The website War is warroom.org. We're on ten stations now in Virginia, North Carolina, and uh, in Florida. <laughs> uh, so, so that's that's all he really uh, had to say. But let's listen to historical. Steve Bannon, because again, he's somebody that I respect. I, I look, when Steve Bannon speaks, I listen, right? I, I remember in 2016, he was spot on. And here he is in 2016 pointing to the, the way that Hillary Clinton f- fucked up the election for herself by going with the Democratic uh, narrative of, uh, of uh, identity politics. You're black, you're white, you're, you're this, you're that, you're gay, you're straight, you're homo, you're not homo. I, all those things, like you're trans. Uh, remember when he said that? You remember when Hillary and, and the Democrats shifted into that and Bannon caught it and said, we're winning, we're going to win, watch. Do you that? believe that if, in fact, somebody's talking about racial identity and identity of politics rather than economic issues, they lose? It's only coming out of one speaker, I'm sorry. That's the best I can do. Let me give you the perfect example, 100%. Here's the example. When, when I was announced on Monday or Tuesday, after that Saturday and Sunday with Trump, the, the, the mainstream media and the left go, Trump is down 16. We know he's heading to 20. The Clinton campaign knows it's over for him. Okay, he knows it's over for him. He brought in a bomb thrower. And he brought in this guy, Bannon. What's this guy, Bannon, going to do? Bannon's going to wreak havoc on all his enemies on the way down. This is Trump's, it's all going to be vengeance, right? And what you saw was the exact opposite. A highly disciplined, focused campaign on going to certain areas we knew we had to go to with that message every day of populism and nationalism. In the industrial Middle West. Yes, industrial Middle West, but also in North Carolina. One thing, about a week later, Hillary Clinton, who had been with all her fat cats in the Hamptons and Silicon Valley doing nothing but raising money, right, the entire time. She comes out to give her first speech since I was announced. So I go into the, the war room we had with TVs all over and all my young team there. You know, Jason Miller, Andy Sarabia, Stephen Chung were sitting there on every TV and they got, she comes out and she goes, it's, it's the Breitbart, Bannon, white supremacist, alt-right speech. And I sat there right then and told the crowd, I said, we got her. If that's where she's going to go, we got her. She's done. We're 15 points down. And right there I said, she's reconfirmed to me. She has no earthly idea what she's doing. She has no earthly idea where this country is. Trump's message and Trump, we can beat her. And I thought at the time we could actually beat her big. Maybe not 300 electoral votes, but I said we can beat her. She, she, they, they walked into a trap. America does not think it's a racist country. People don't. You saw in Houston. This is America doesn't believe that this is a racist country. Listen to what he's saying. Listen to what the guy is saying. People don't. You saw in Houston. This is the greatest country in, in, in man's history of how we pull together. People don't think they're racist. And she's sitting up there with identity politics at this time 
when the elites in this country have, have had an economic hate crime, you want to talk about hate crimes? Economic hate crime on the working class people in this country, that's a hate crime. How the industrial base in this country has been eviscerated in the elites, the ascended economy of Silicon Valley, Wall Street, Hollywood and Washington, D.C., and she's got the gall to sit up there and talk about that. That's exact. Her whole defeat was summarized in that first day she came back. He had it. He had it absolutely right at the time, and he put it on Trump. Now, where did he get that message? Bernie Sanders had been saying it throughout the primary that that the real terrorism, the real uh, uh, war on the American people is an economic war. Is is uh, that's the brand of terrorism? I, f- I forgot what how he actually said it, but Bernie Sanders had been running on that message. And when Trump came along and and Steve Bannon adapted that message, and the Democrats ran with identity politics, he knew that that was that was a a winning strategy for Trump. So that's why I call Steve Bannon a uh, master master strategist. So Newsweek reported it. I think that's that's really it. That's who Steve Bannon is. And um, oh, there's one other piece. So so if let's talk about impeachment one more time. So if if the if the House gets impeachment, right? If the House can get their their vote, you know, the uh, majority of the vote to vote to impeach Trump. The process then moves over to the Senate, where it's likely to fail. Now, Mitch McConnell has said that he would try to derail any Trump impeachment process when it comes to the Senate, but that's actually not how it works. What happens is uh, uh, John Roberts won't let Mitch McConnell derail a Trump impeachment trial. Why is John Roberts, chief, um, the uh, chief justice of the Supreme Court, why is he relevant in a Trump impeachment? Well, uh, because he would oversee, not Mitch McConnell, the, 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 historically, the, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court oversees uh, the Senate uh, trial to impeach a president. That's how it would work. Now, the Senate can change the rules. They can get rid of that idea. You know, so it's just, the whole system is rigged. But it would be interesting if you took a, uh, the Chief Justice, John Roberts, uh, who was appointed by Bush, technically a Republican, to oversee the Senate to make sure that it runs legally and not, you know, not bullshittily uh, like a Mitch McConnell. So then you can, you could, the Democrats could never turn around and say that the, that the Senate rigged the, uh, rigged the jury uh, against impeachment. So... That's just something that could happen. Will Will Chief Justice be the Will Chief Justice uh, Roberts be the guy that oversees the uh, impeachment process in the Senate? It's very likely. It's very likely. So, Marcus Carthy reporting just to say that impeachment is very real. It's a real phenomenon, right? Although we think it's you know it's jerky and it doesn't matter, as Steve Bannon has told us, it doesn't matter if the evidence exists to impeach the president. They don't care. With Russiagate, they didn't care. All they said was get him. He, he, coll- he colluded with the Russians. And we find out, we know factually that there was no Russian intervention whatsoever. Nothing. Not at all. Right? And it, the whole story was fabricated and the Democrats were willing to impeach a United States president based on that infactuality. Right, so now we have the same system, same situation where there's this one piece of circumstantial evidence that says Trump investigated Biden, who's running for president, and because of that, it's interference in 2020 election, impeach him. It's, it's a bullshit charge. But the point is, it doesn't matter. What matters is, behind closed doors right now, Adam Schiff under the direction of Nancy Pelosi, are moving to impeach Trump. And the Democrats are all all in. They're all in to vote to impeach Trump. Why? I don't know, because he's, a, he's all these horrible things. Look what he did. Right? With no evidence, with no due process, with no truth behind any of it. That's where the Democrats, that's what the Democrats have become, a party of, of um, divisiveness, where they, they can't win on the policy. They can't support 
a candidate like a Bernie Sanders because they have to bow to the donor class, the billionaire class that put them there. So uh, don't take it lightly, you know, get on board here, you know. So uh, Marcus Conte reporting.